She thought she was still dangerous, paunchy but dangerous. Welcome to the Football Ramble. It is Wednesday the 20th of September. I'm Pete Donaldson. I'm Luke Moore. And I'm Vidushin Ahantaraja. Woo! Lucky Moore, band and album. Don't know it. Don't just simply do not know it, I'm well, afraid. Thank you very much to Ross Brownell who got in touch uh, via the Patreon. Uh, if you are a Patreon member, you can choose the uh, intro line for Wednesday's show. What is it? It's it's pulp. It's the night that Minnie Timberly died. That's why I don't know it. From the last album, which That's why wasn't I don't know very it. good. Awful uh, band. Yes, Tiago Silva's <laughs> listening. Tiago Silva's listening to Adele in his man cave and Champions League is back, yes. people. And you know what, lads? I'm really um, interested in the group stage of the Champions League. Oh, this really? Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm dipping a tour. You know. Is this about the same time that you stop getting interested in geopolitical issues? <laughs> <laughs> Is that yeah. how it is? Yeah, it's weird, that, isn't it? Weird, that, isn't it? But uh, yeah. yeah, I tried to unsuccessfully get into OTC's uh, React score last night on the Zoom. But, uh, Did you? Uh, yeah, I was just chatting about Shola Miobi at the New Camp, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, would, they wouldn't let me in. But uh, yeah. I, I love the idea of Andy being there wherever he was. Uh, recording on location <laughs> and you just sliding past in the background like yeah. yeah. your top off switch, switch the light off so he doesn't know we're here <laughs> <laughs> me with Danny Graham see, did you see Danny Graham the no. uh, ex-Sunderland I know his, who he is, his yeah. most recent club being Sunderland yeah. uh, out there in uh, in Milan with a massive two pint in his hands there we go lifelong that's Newcastle quite sweet. fan that is sweet he's that probably waited sweet. his whole life to be able to drink two pints at one go <laughs> <laughs> it, is. it is well we will get on to the Newcastle uh, Milan match but uh, uh, the highlight of the night surely last night was uh, Lazio's goalkeeper Ivan uh, Providel uh, scoring in the 95th minute with the last touch of the game he's done it before Luke so I'd never know I didn't know he'd done it before yeah and it's an incredible move and for those who haven't seen it um, it looked like it was planned wasn't it it looked like it yeah. looked like they they trained on this. So they had a corner, mm. and the ball you'd expect for the goalkeeper being right in the mix. Yeah, you know, the, the 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 guy taking the corner is just going to lump it straight into them. Into the, yeah, into being the being caught like flat footed. They and... don't. They no. play it short. They t- take it out to the edge of the box, and he times his run perfectly. And what mm. makes the run look better? It's like an Erling Haaland style run for him to head it in. <laughs> what makes it look better is that he's dressed in bright yellow. Yeah, so you can really see. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. it's like a high vis run. He's very visible. Yeah, I it mean, does, it really does feel like a set play because. None of the other attacking players or other Lazio players go are like like uh, between the penalty spot and the goal. Yeah, so it's almost like they've cleared out to let him have that run. <laughs> yeah, he's, run. He, through. he's good at this. Yeah, he's fucking well, great at this. Well, Nicky Bandini, thought his uh, very own uh, Nicky Bandini said, uh, Serie A's two teams took forty-two shots between them tonight, and the only one that went in was from a goalkeeper, yeah, which nice is a lovely little fact. But so on to the uh, Milan at Newcastle match. Bit of a robbery all told in, in a rainy, then sunny uh, Milan. Uh, goalless uh, at the death of that. Uh, Eddie Howe was asked before this match uh, about not training or walking around the San Siro uh, pitch ahead of the game. He said, that's all overrated. I don't believe in it. It's just a pitch. They probably could have done a lot uh, if they just hung out in the penalty areas, to be fair. Because <laughs> <laughs> that was some pretty desperate defending at times, Vish. Yeah, yeah, it was. It felt to me like they were a bit overawed by yeah. it. Not not necessarily the stadium, although I think playing in the stadium is actually a good way of cutting through that. Mm. It felt like you were playing the shirt rather than the players. Yes. This isn't like the same Milan. Very story team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 and I suppose at the same time, there are a lot of those players who are playing in the Champions League for the first time. One of my favourite moments actually happened just before kickoff, and it's... Jacob Murphy, who uh, you know, I realise we've panned on the show, but seeing him with that beaming smile yeah, while the Champions League, the Champions music League. was going on. It's like when you see a dog in the passenger seat in the car. It's like, <laughs> yeah. He shouldn't be there. That's great. He might have fallen out the window. Oh, it's a left-hand drive. It's Pete, fine. <laughs> Pete also, Pete also um, pointed out that the little mascot standing in front of him looked just like social media alcoholic, the bootlegger. <laughs> <laughs> that is true, yeah. And, and celebrity roofer, I like to call him. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't getting any. I'm fair. I don't know if he is an alcoholic. Actually, no. that's unfair of me. But he's certainly a. He's created a few. <laughs> <laughs> he's created a few with his shenanigans. Did you not think there was a point in that second half? And I realised that Newcastle, all the Newcastle players were knackered. Like Alexander Isak looked like he needed a new lung. <laughs> Tommy, at one point. It was hilarious. How, t- how much does he blowing about <laughs> sixty minutes in? What's going on there? But the, but it felt like the game opened up, and, and I was like, I reckon you could. When, yeah, when I, when I saw Miggy come on, I was like, come on, stretch him, yeah. pressure. Uh, it, it looked like a, a game. Because the, the way that kind of Milan uh, counter-attack was just so incisive and so direct and that and Newcastle were just constantly blown, just trying to get back. But on the other hand, 
their keeper did look a bit flappy and punchy and yeah. a bit and a bit. Uh, he had a to bit go weird. off injured as well. He mm. did have to go. He was he was so flappy and punchy. He flapped and punched himself out. <laughs> but uh, but I, I think when I saw this draw as a Newcastle fan, I thought playing in the Premier League, you shouldn't fear many of these teams. And PSG obviously are in transition, and the other two, well, you know, you might catch them at home uh, on an on an odd day, but. With a team so out of form like Newcastle United, they are unable to string a few passes together at the moment. So, this was a really good result. It was a smash and grab for me. Yeah, it was a really you, good point. You called it a robbery. I don't I think, think it was. I don't think it can be a robbery because I don't think anyone got anything, did they? Right. I yeah. suppose they got a point each, but you didn't. Really for, ro- for Newcastle United, they didn't deserve yeah, but the you've way not, they played. But if I come to your house and rob you, right. we both up with, end up with the same. End outcome. Up with the same. I, don't, I don't think, I don't think <laughs> it's no, a robbery. Because, yeah. No, because those points were mine. The, the things that you stole were mine. So I'm down some. But you're not given the three points before the game starts. We both no. start with zero points. But the way. And then we take away a point. But each. the way these. T- yeah, I guess. So someone's made off with one point. It's a negotiation. <laughs> someone's made yeah. off with one point. Well, we don't know who's got that point. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll take right. that. Yeah. Lazio got it. We cleared that We cleared that up. Yeah. Is it. Was it yeah. was it bittersweet for you that Newcastle started the right? I mean, obviously Trippier is Trippier, and we can't really criticise what he's been able to achieve. He's an right. amazing player, but in front of him, Longstaff and Murphy. You happy with I that? I love to San Siro. Uh, it, it's not. I wouldn't say it's ideal, Luke. No, but I would say it was lovely to see, uh, and uh, it, you know, it was it was a it was a feel good time. It's good to see the the, the Geordies in uh, uh, in is it Navlier Navlier? I, I, I've been. I was literally there about four months ago. Were you? <laughs> Were you casing the joint? Was casing the joint? I was checking out <laughs> the, the best robbery. puddles. This would be a lovely canal to swim in. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, but, um, uh, did you see that um, the Newcastle plane was delayed? I guess through due to the European the storms over Europe, mm. and um, so they ended up doing their press conference later, and and a couple. Of the guys from the Ramble team put it on the social media feeds. Yeah, know, this is what's yeah. happened. And then uh, our, our friend and listener, Ewan Taylor, <laughs> responded with the news that the plane had been delayed by saying, This is the most boring piece of football news ever reported. <laughs> Is it? I, I, prefer- I didn't know if it was. I thought that's probably a bit hard. I prefer- wasn't the thing that they were going to get in trouble with UEFA because it start- because their press conference started late because of the delay? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll take it up with Ewan Taylor. I mean, he, he was upset about it. He said it was very, very boring news. Yeah, that's fair. But- but I don't know. I think this is the one. I mean, the athlete will get a few pages out of it, won't Oh, 6,000 words. Come on. 6,000 words. Yeah, the latest press conference ever. I'm sure. Well, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, can you see Newcastle getting anything out of, out of the group stage of this uh, tournament, Vish? I... I can to be honest, I think we're gonna have a nice time. Yeah, same, same. I, like, th- there's, th- there's definitely scope for finishing third mm. and getting into the Europa League mm. um, at the very least. I, I think the, if you look at the teams, can you revise that comment, please? Yeah, I, I'd like. Can second, I also please. just point out that? Um, Pete, Pete's Vish, Pete saying Newcastle having a nice time isn't necessarily the same as them picking up a lot of points. Right, good, good point. point. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, is, that is fair. Because if you look at, um, obviously, PSG are, are PSG. Um, Dortmund have lost a few players mm. and are naturally going to be a bit unaware. And I was, you know, playing PSG at home, second game of the season, mm. or sort of like the second game of the, of the group stage, I think that's, that's, a, that's a lovely little thing. Yeah. Get some of the fancy players over to your joint, <laughs> show them around the place, you know, just like bomb them with noise. <laughs> the thing I do wonder about, and I suppose there were shades of it with West Ham last year, and I only really thought this at the back end of that Milan game, because you have to give so much, yeah. you have to give so much without the ball, which seems like a choice at this point rather than like a, an actual way of playing. Um, you kind of wonder how the Wednesday, Wednesday, Sunday, Tuesday, mm. Saturday thing well, yeah, we is going to ma- affect you. Yeah, we couldn't you. manage Saturday, Tuesday. But it was weird. I thought maybe we could use the Brentford uh, match to... Um, get into form to play Milan, but it's actually the reverse. Get get the form uh, performance in Milan <laughs> to take it to the Premier League. Yeah, which is I, weird. I, I think um, obviously PSG had a really poor result last week. They they, they lost three two to a Nice. Mm. Um, well, I think it's the first time in like since the Qatar takeover that they're currently fifth or the outside the top three. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And then and then I, I at this stage of the season, what yeah. I'm trying to say is. Like, in that group, PSG have a massive reputation because of what they, you know, the funding they've got and how mm. and their, their kind of recent story, if you like. But they've, I mean, by their own standards, they've underperformed overall in the Champions League for sure. Yeah, Borussia Dortmund are what on average a round of sixteen type team in the Champions League. I know they've gone to the quarterfinal um, more recently, um, but generally speaking, they are. And then you've got a um, you've got a situation with Milan where you know they're. You know, You've got good, your point. Good team at the moment, but you've already got a point away from home. Mm. I think it's 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 definitely a kind of extension of the point that, that Vish made earlier, which is like if you play against the reputation of these teams, you're gonna get you're beat. You're not gonna do very well. But yeah. if you if you take it as you find it, you might mm. be okay. 
That's yeah. the way I see it anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, speaking of, um, well, it- Italian midfielder, Sandro Tonali, we weren't, uh, received a standing ovation from Milan fans uh, when he was uh, subbed off. I thought off. you were going to say in the, the Weatherspoons he visited. <laughs> hey, he's here. He's here. Yeah. Get him get him on that QR code. Well, get he, him two burgers and two fries for tenner. He's finally spoken about his trip to Weatherspoons. And I'm not really sure whether he's thumbs up or thumbs down kind of guy with the, with the spoons in question. I had asked people about the places and restaurants to spend a night with my family. I, I didn't receive the answer I was expecting. I spent the night in a pub in my city. You don't usually go to the pub with family, but it was a special night. Fun. Very. I think you'll find the people in Newcastle often go to the pub with their family. Very mainland Europe opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why am I not in a cafe with my family yeah. or a restaurant? Yeah. This is this is neither of us. Can things. I see the wine list? Yeah. <laughs> the 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 funny thing about that is um, actually Newcastle does have a, like a really nice and, and slightly different pub culture. I think so. Mm. Like I, I say specifically, somebody's grew, grown up in London because one of the things I loved about Newcastle is like people go to a pub for like a quiet drink. Even if it's like Friday at eight PM yeah. in a blaring pub, there will be a quarter of some of someone just having a quiet drink. Yeah, there'll be a, there'll be an old man with a beard uh, wearing, even if it's summertime, wearing a big woolly hat, <laughs> enjoying half a Newquay Brown. Very nice. Yeah. Do you think that? Beautiful. So I, I noticed that in Weatherspoons in Newcastle, Weatherspoons have actually got quite a comprehensive website. Right, um, yeah. Where you can go to every because dads visit websites and look at them. <laughs> yeah, exactly, they love websites. Exactly. That's all my dad does. He gets, up, gets up at one o'clock in the morning, gets on his computer, and visits websites. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah. And maybe the Weatherspoons is the one. And you could, he could be the bearded man with the woolly hat, presumably. He, well, definitely, definitely. Okay, but he's not a Weatherspoons guy. He's got a local pub, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, it's a flat roof. It's a flat roof. What's it called? Uh, it's one of Richie's lot, I think. What, yeah. What's he's that a, mean? Uh, Gillen, sorry, yeah, Gillen's. Gillen. Gillen. It looks like a a cricket clubhouse. Yes, yeah, it's quite similar. Yeah. Um, but but so I, I checked the Weatherspoons um, website for the particular branch that I assume that Tonelli visited. It looks okay. like the one in Newcastle nearest to all that stuff. Right. And they do do a Whitby breaded scampi in there that you can't really get in any other local Ooh. Weatherspoons. Oh, nice. Okay. Because of the location. So I'm hoping Tonelli and his family availed themselves of that speciality item. Yeah. But he's not mentioned it in the quote, unfortunately. What does a scampi look, out, look like outside of bread crumbs? Couldn't tell you. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. It's a know. tail, isn't it? Isn't it a tail of a it's fish? A tail isn't of... it? Tail of a kind of crustacean, I think. Yeah, I think it's it just it's just like a prawn, isn't it? Should we get some it's a silly prawn? In and Should we open them up? Scampi yeah. fries. In. It's apparently called. A, apparently, it's also called the Norway lobster or the sausage of the sea. The sausage <laughs> of the sea. Lips and arseholes, my daddy's. <laughs> um, right, moving on to uh, Manchester City uh, against Red Star Belgrade. The Hallers are uh, getting off to uh, not not quite the start they were expecting uh, as Hallers oh, of the mate. competition. The, fir- Moore. the first half was the absolute archetypal stripey jumper job. It's great to see. <laughs> and even the way the goal went in was like, oh, City thought it was offside because it was yeah. given offside and obviously it was overturned. <laughs> and then it went straight to half-time and they must have come away thinking, what's happened there? Yeah. What Tw- has happened 22 there? shots in the first half. They, they, Champions it, League record it, in the first half. It wasn't just a stripey jumper job. It was like Red Star Belgrade walking down the street, walking up behind Man City, mm. pulling their T-shirt up and over their head and stealing their handbag and running off. Right. And then going, what's happened? They must have, thought, they must have been in the away dressing room at half-time thinking, is there a way, go through the rule book, is there a way we can leave now? Now, we've got to get out of here. <laughs> what, can we, can what we sell loophole? them something? Can, yeah. we, can we say, like, right, we will, we'll take, let's take this. Yeah, and we'll give you—I don't know what we'll give you in return. You can have not oh, stripy jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> you might need them in a bit. I won't want any of our players, so we can't do that. <laughs> I, 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 and obviously, that, and then and then it was obvious that um, old Pep had given them the, the a, a, a rocket at half time because mm. they scored straight away after yeah. half time, didn't they? And do, that you, was that. Do, do you think that um, Manchester City showed them um, uh, too little respect when uh, Edison did that silky turn, that silky sort of creepy turn? It was the best turn of the night, and um, with the exception of Rafael Leal's falling over in the Milan game, oh, that, that, was yeah. an in, that was an interesting choice from Leal. I mean, we've we've moved on, but like it was an interesting choice to kind of he took. The, the, the ball around about three players and then yeah. decided to back heel. I mean, he looked way better than all Newcastle players. <laughs> yeah. that, in that His header at the death was very close. Until the end. Yeah. Um, it was a weird one. Um, yeah, so that was um, Edison's outrageous turn outside his own box. Pep's reaction? Uh, what, I didn't see his one, reaction. Oh, before. it was it was like, I mean, because he was dressed quite well. Overdressed, you would say, for that uh, for that weather, one, one would suggest. But he was very much like, he wasn't disappointed. He was 
sort of like, we're, we're going to have to have a chat about this. But th- right. so wh- it was the reaction of like, oh, like, oh God, what are you doing? And I, my immediate thought was, no, you created this monster. Yeah. <laughs> You're the one talking about him playing midfield. If he yeah. does a little, yeah. little silky turn, you, exactly. know, in, you know, just inside his own half. Yeah, Why does it never go you? wrong for Man City? <laughs> it never bloody goes wrong. Yeah. It goes wrong for everyone else. It goes, just never goes wrong for them. I think it does if you go back far enough. Okay. <laughs> um, I think for, w- w- to put it in perspective about Edison, you're absolutely right to say Pep created that monster. This is a goalkeeper who about a year and a half ago for three months or so the media had a quite a decent substantial rumour that he was going to start taking penalties for yeah, the club. Right. That's the monster you've created. <laughs> Don't be surprised if he starts doing turns outside his own box. Yeah. Can we uh, have a moment to appreciate just how good Alvarez's goal is? Because mm. it was one of those ones where they sl- they slowed it down on the replay and I was like, no, 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 no. Put it, play it in full speed because you don't, you just don't get the quality when you slow it down. Yes, because yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks think, too well thought out, doesn't it? As a boy, the, it's slow. Yeah, because the first time he takes it past the keeper, I think he's gone left foot to take it past and then right foot. Mm, but yeah. He's gone right foot, right foot, but, which yeah. means like he hasn't changed his standing foot no. despite taking two paces. It's like, amazing. <laughs> and, and, and I think he is having like a low key, brilliant season. Yeah. yeah. And I think the position he's in, playing like just behind Haaland, who takes, Haaland's basically like Jupiter, right? <laughs> just, his gravity just sucks everything yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and Alvarez, can, <laughs> life can flourish on Alvarez. He's Earth, basically. Yeah, yeah. So he could just have a lovely time because Haaland's taken all the attention, all the gravity away. He's going to have a, I think he's going to have a massive season and people aren't really going to notice for another couple of months. Yeah. But he, even so, like Alvarez, had, he's had a, having a quietly good start because Haaland's still having a good start b- despite as he did last night, missing quite a few chances. He missed so many against West Ham yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, on the um, Edison turn, by the way, mm. um, you know that scene in Jurassic Park where um, Sam Neill's character um, is like the dinosaur expert? Yeah. And he's got the flair to attract the T-Rex mm. and he throws it, mm. right? That's Edison's turn. What Jeff Goldblum does afterwards where he fucks it up because I know what he's doing, that's basically going to be about 15 goalkeepers this weekend right, in whatever yeah. league they're playing. Yes. They're going to see that and go, oh, I'm going to fancy a bit of that. And they're going <laughs> to fuck it up and end up with a broken leg in a heap in a disused <laughs> toilet building um, on the back of a Jeep away from a T-Rex. As yeah, you've mixed the metaphors. Got, really I've, I've got carried away there. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying, though. You really have, yeah. Um, will, will Alvarez uh, make, uh, manage to make captain by the end of the season? Because uh, obviously uh, we've, heard, we've right. heard this week that uh, apparently Man City have um, five captains at the club. Kyle Walker has been confirmed as one of them. Uh, I'm not sure uh, which one uh, has... Uh, Gundogan was obviously the captain before, but now there's five captains. I don't know how that do works. Want, do you want to hear how it on works? The, on the, well, they've got to do fines, so, haven't they? Yeah, they well, got, they've but, got to administer the fines in, in, a, in a move of quite quite large pomposity <laughs> they've renamed them to quote unquote senior leaders <laughs> and it's Carl uncles Wal- football uncles football uncles that makes it yeah. sound like Ilkay Gundogan was made redundant because you know sometimes when that happens they have to Cut change the, the job yeah, title yeah. 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 yeah exactly so uh, it's Carl Walker <laughs> Ruben Diaz Rodri Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva are the five senior leaders but right. this, so this is another example of what, what Pete was shouting about before. Why does it never fuck up for Man City? Because that is yeah. absolutely, that is ripe for mixed messages, for egos getting in the way. And yeah. yet every single player you've named is like totally it's, bought in. And, and Rodri, kind, you, don't, you don't think that he's 27, but he is. Yeah. It's, the, it's the kind of thing that a, a foreign manager that no one knew very well in the 90s coming to the Premier League would do and be lampooned about it for the next 20 years yeah. after being mm. sacked after nine games. Yeah, you it's right. kind of thing that one day Ramos would do. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the Absolutely, day. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. And people are like, oh, what a loser. Get yeah. Tim Sherwood in. Yeah. I, I reckon like Man City are just suddenly going to decide to just play with their arms directly up in the air like they're being held up. Yeah. And just sort of go, well, we, can do, we could literally do anything and it always comes off. And it'll work. And then everyone's going to do it. What are these bars going across the field? Oh, we're just going to play like table football players now? <laughs> see how that works for us. Yeah. And, and hot on the heels of um, the player we didn't mention on Monday who was on the bench for Chelsea at the weekend, mm. Ronnie Stutter. Right. He sounds like a regen and looks like a regen. Do you know that uh, Man City have also got a young player called Oscar Bob? Yeah, that was good. He had a shot at the end. Yeah, yeah. That was spelled lovely. B-O-B? B-O-B-B. Ah, oh, I like it. Like, like Phil Bab. Phil, Phil, no. Phil Bob. Phil Bab. Pro Evo Phil Bab. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. But they, they won the game. Um, it, it looked like it was going to... I mean, there was no realistic chance Red Star Belgrade could do what they did mm. for the whole game and get away with it. The goalkeeper no. was, you know... Busy. The goalkeeper was just the busiest man in mm. football, and that, that busier never, than Pop. Oh yeah, it was never gonna. Mm. It was never gonna sustain itself for the whole ninety minutes. Because mm. you know those kind of um, play, f- football fans of kind of our age will, will know that there, there used to be. You'd go into a game where you'd feel that oh, you're just never going to score today. It's one of those things, yeah. right? That doesn't really seem to happen with big teams now. They always seem to be able to do it. 
Like mm. when was the last time really you'd, you'd see that happen? It, you, it feels like it used to happen all the time. Yeah. Like it was just going to not be your day. Mm. Like I used to go to Fratton Park and see Pompey when they were a good, you know, decent enough team and be like, and be like, okay, well, they're just not going to score today. Mm. That just doesn't happen to Man City. Yeah, no. they've almost like... The gap's too big. Yeah, the gap's too big. And the money that gets you players also buys you back some of that misfortune. Yeah, so yeah, that doesn't exist in the ether anymore. That's yeah. twenty. That's twenty million every transfer. It's yeah, just kind yeah. Of, yeah, that's a tax. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. The unlucky tax. Um, well, um, they may find themselves in all kinds of hot water at the weekend, uh, guys, because uh, Pep, Guard- oh, Pep, no. Guard- <laughs> Pep Guardiola uh, has said on uh, Man City's next game in the Premier League. Next, we have Nottingham Forest, two Champions League winners. They've won one more than us. Shut up, Pep. Yeah, do you think it's patronising? I, uh, I think it is, actually. Yeah. Isn't it weird? Of, you can sort of damn with massive prayers. Yeah. I think it's because last season, um, Forest fans were singing at City, um, Champions League, uh, U- European Champions, you'll never sing that. They are singing that now. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's their fault, then. Yeah. Yeah. Two European Cups, you'll never yeah. sing that <laughs> until this season. I, I, but on one, one hand, you might feel like it's nice of Pep to kind of know that, right? And know, mm. his, know his English football history and, and kind of buy into it and be mm. respectful of the Forest, but you're saying it's patronising. I think it is patronising. But is that more to do with the complex you've got about your life? Uh, <laughs> everything is everything I say on this podcast and everything I say in real life is all to do with my hang-ups. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's good to know. It's good to know. And, <laughs> and yours. Uh, <laughs> Barcelona elsewhere uh, beat Royal Antwerp 5-0 uh, last night. It's been reported that apparently Barcelona may very well be um, <laughs> be ironing on the Rolling Stones logo for their uh, for their shirts for the next El Clasico. Uh, they've collaborated in the past with Drake and Rosalia, but uh, apparently they're going to be um, wearing the big the big tonguey. What is it? That, I don't, I, is that Mick Jagger's mouth? I don't know whose it's mouth lips, that is. The lips, and the, the, lips and the tongue. I'm not sure whose it is either. It's a cartoon mouth, isn't it? Famously, mm. but um, is that to do with their? Um... <laughs> Is that to do with their um, tie-in with Spotify? Uh, I'm, I'm putting two and right, two together yeah. here. I might be getting five. Imagine le- leveraging that deal with but Jagger they, and Core. But they used to... I thought that. Bunts. It's like when um, Metallica's, that Metallica song, Master of Puppets, appeared on Stranger Things. Right. Like, I think that actually happened because I think Lars Ulrich just loved, the, loved Stranger Things. Like, yeah, he definitely yeah. just used the, the song because they're famously very just, litigious. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't sound like something Lars Ulrich would do. No, no, but and, it, and can I have a lot of money as well? <laughs> <laughs> but he came out... No, because I think the, the Stranger Things creators said... Right. Uh, we never would have afford that song. Right. Like someone intervened. Okay, do. And then Lars Ulrich came out and talked about it. Ah. I think you wouldn't. I mean, the last thing you want to be doing is getting involved in kind of IP discussions with the Rolling Stones, right? Presumably. Uh, yeah. That I is mean, a minefield. Di- <laughs> Imagine how there's many. No, there's an every got. chance given Barcelona's recent record financially. They, 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 they just did it. Yeah. yeah. They just did it. Yeah. I think it's. I think it's public domain, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you uh, if you ever want to urinate in one of those mouths, uh, there is a toilet. Uh, <laughs> there is a urinal. You love urinal chat. That's all you talked about while I was. You don't start the urinal chat with pissing in someone's mouth. No. St. Albans. It's a family show. There's yeah. a St. Pub, Albans now. There's a pub next to St. Albans uh, train station uh, and um, in the toilet they've got those kind of like Rolling Stones mouths that you're in it in. Right, okay. So Sticks in the mind, clearly. Sticks in the mind. Yeah. Uh, Gareth Bale. Remember the El Clasico um, exploits of, uh, of one Gareth Bale? Uh, he's going to be in the new PGA Tour video game, Lukey Moore. Obviously... There's all kinds of things happening with the new EAFC uh, video game, but I, I what, didn't expect happening? the what's first. Happening? Well, it's just, it's just, it's just uh, for the first time, I think women are going to be able to, um, compete with with men uh, in 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 this new system. Obviously, FIFA uh, are going to be creating their own video games, so mm. EA have had to sort of make their own. Um, so it's all very exciting in the world of uh, football video games. But I didn't expect the biggest footballing video game story to be Gareth Bale has been scanned and he's in PGA Tour. That's he's not quite... even a professional golfer. But, they, but no. they, they, they do that sometimes. Like, that is very common in um, in video games. It's, it's been pretty common in PJ and right. Tiger Woods Golf. So that well, unlockable characters. Yeah, right. so, like, so Justin Timberlake was on a previous... Um, Why? What a 2000 story. story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gareth Bale's uh, a pretty 2000 you know, story, though. Isn't Jim Campbell's it? got an obsession with the most 90s thing to ever happen. Right. And he thinks it's that um, <laughs> the Nemesis Inferno had its own soft drink. Yes. Right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. possibly the most 2000s thing to ever happen... And I'll happily throw it over to our listeners mm. for this. Is perhaps Justin Timberlake being an unlockable character on Tiger Woods Golf? Yeah, that's yeah. got to be up there. Yeah, yeah. I think that's 2007, I think, as well. Right, so, okay. yeah. The Nokia shell clam phone, maybe. What's that? It's like we used to. It was like a weird. I don't think it was even a clam shell. It, was just, it looked like a shell. What you about know, like the... It was like a weird, and it buttons was all around. And you couldn't really text message properly. A Motorola so Razor. That that's pretty. Yeah. Nice. that one from the Matrix. That's 90s, though, isn't it? That is nice. Yeah. The you said 90s. Yeah, but I was talking about the 2000s. Yeah, right then. yeah. Oh, yeah cool. no, and, and so like even, even in recent games, like uh, Michael B. Jordan uh, was on the uh, NBA 2K game as right. well. So it, mm. it's quite, it's pretty okay. common, yeah. The band Orson. 
a guy with a hat. Remember them? <laughs> Just leave it there. All right, well, yeah. uh, elsewhere, uh, Andy, uh, Andy Brassel, our very own Andy Brassel, was in Paris last night for BSG versus Dortmund, and he recorded a special episode of OTC Reacts from inside the stadium with none other than Jonathan Johnson. Yeah. Not my neighbour, who is also called Johnny Johnson. Which is he is really? Very enjoyable. Do we whenever, definitely know whenever, it's not your neighbour? Whenever I take in a package, hilariously, he looks just like Mike Ashley as well. Um, he, <laughs> he, uh, but his name is Johnny Johnson. Uh, head on over to uh, On the Continent for that feed for all the reaction to that game and make sure to subscribe while you're there. It is an excellent, excellent show. Right. We're going to be looking forward to uh, some of the matches taking place in the Champions League and beyond uh, this evening. Uh, in just a moment, we'll be back in a tick. Ricky Lambert here. Ex Southampton, Liverpool, and England striker. I withdraw my consent to be governed by any corrupt, compromised, belligerent, criminal parliament or government. I will not comply. Ricky Lambert there. You yeah. know um, <laughs> the bit in the US office where he um, he has to declare bankruptcy? I, I declare, declare bankruptcy. bankruptcy. Yeah, that's yeah. basically what he's doing. It doesn't work like that, Ricky. No, no. it's a bit when you when um, dads write on Facebook that they, they hereby withdraw consent from using your pictures. You know how many pictures up there? Yeah. Nobody yeah. wants your pictures. If you agree, copy and use this. <laughs> or your own profile. Or, or during COVID when people would put Magna Carta on their mm. shop front <laughs> so they could still try yeah. and sell their pasties. The Ma- Jay-Z album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Matt, Matt Letizia was in that little a bit of footage but yeah. the music is used is so high in the mix you can't actually hear what he's saying so, Matt, so he's bit, Dark Forces Dark Forces it's definitely Bad Dark Forces Dark, Dark Forces Matt Letizia is certainly the, is the, definitely the gateway drug to Ricky Lambert <laughs> Matt Letizia <laughs> so, is your yeah, communal yeah. garden yeah like I, I mean yeah, I've I've said my I've said my piece on Matt Letizia. <laughs> Sadly, his newsletter this week wasn't it just it wasn't just interesting. Golf. Just more just golf. golf. Yeah, 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 okay. But put uh, him in PJ Tour. If Ricky Lambert <laughs> on a nice round earth, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's that lockable character. Yeah, you'd be you drive off the tee and he just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it never stops. But Ricky Lambert did a newsletter. We'd all be in trouble. Exactly. Yeah. I, I'm I fairly certain. Yeah. I don't want to be rude. That would but be some I'm... spicy stuff. Again, it's it's Creed's uh, it's Creed's blog <laughs> in uh, the office on the Word yeah. document. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even being there, it's, it's strong stuff. I'm, I'm pretty certain Ricky Lambert can't put a sentence together anyway, so we're all yeah, safe. On exactly, that. exactly. But uh, listen, we will not comply. We will not comply. No. We will be uh, that lone voice in, in the wilderness. Fish, are you looking forward to tonight's uh, Man United uh, uh, football match in the I Champions mean, League? What do you Bayern think? Bayern Munich versus Manchester United. What's that? Muziala's back. Yeah. Goretzka. Harry, K- Harry Kane. Has- Corman. Join the party, lads. Everyone's invited to the goal orgy. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't but remember. Use protection. Use protection. <laughs> no, um, I'm not looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> I don't know what triggered it, but last week I got. Um, I think Luke, you might have said something nice about me. So, like, people mm. replied to Luke's Luke's message saying nice things about me, including one which was like, "Great to have a Manchester United fan on the show." Mm. Which I, I think it was about. I was like. About to go to bed, saw it, and I was like, oh, that's really nice. Mm. And I was like, oh, I'll reply to that. I'll, I'll wait for the morning. Mm. Woke up in the morning, had a coffee. And I was like, oh, yeah, that message. Looked at it. I realised I'd read it wrong the, f- the night before. It was always nice to have a sad United fan on a Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite existential, though. Yeah, it is. That's gone I, a bit too far, I think far, that's I think. public service, though, isn't it? Yeah. For I, everyone who's had a rough old weekend and they, they don't really want to be at work no, yeah, and then no, they hear no your voice. Was, no one was waiting for Chris Whitty being like, look, let's have a go at this dickhead. <laughs> Can't yeah. wait till he comes on at six. Yeah. yeah. Like, have, you, have you been putting a headlock in a park by someone? Because <laughs> <Saturday night affair? laughs> that's unacceptable if so. But here's the thing. Please subscribe to a few newsletters, that lad. Here's the thing. I'm not going to say that Man United get a result tonight we're going to do a react afterwards Vish you and yes, I so yeah. people can listen out brilliant. for that brilliant Mark Sadie so if it does go imagine meeting your high school bully again after all <laughs> this basically <laughs> what's going to be like it's going to be fantastic but there was a period I'm going to say of ye- given the age that you are of years mm. where you probably look forward to every single game yeah, yeah. no probably 99% of people listening to this show and myself and Pete have never had that experience with the club we support so take your medicine <laughs> Isn't it? Take yeah. medicine. But, yeah. then, but having said that, I don't know how much longer it's reasonable for you to accept the medicine because at some point the medicine's not going to be making you get any better. Yeah, no. at yeah. some point the virus mutates off the back of the medicine. Yeah, and becomes even stronger. It becomes just, bad medicine. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it gives you a, it just gives you a league cup. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Which, in a way, sounds like almost like a, a oh, depressing. I can see my veins. A, a dep- <laughs> it's like an inoculation that means that you're not going to get a bigger tournament yeah. win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It is yeah. like that. It's also a bit like. May not win the League Cup is also a bit like 
going to watch like the latest iteration of a band you really like, but the lead singer's gone, the guitar mm. player's gone. It's basically just the drummer and the keyboard You're player. You're watching The View have a fight in Manchester. You are, basically, yeah. yeah. Oh, God, yeah. that's brilliant. Which yeah, I've that's seen brilliant. you do, by the way, Pete. <laughs> Bloody love it. So are yeah. you looking forward to the game or not, Vish? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, I find myself in this cycle, though, where um, because I, I still, you know, rate and, and I suppose back Eric Ten Hag, you see the the um, the lineup when it's announced, like an hour, an hour and a half before, and you're like, do you kind of do the working out in your head? You're like, yeah, I could see how this works. Mm. I can see how that works. And, you know, he's truly trying to do something here. And it's a different formation every two weeks, yeah? Yeah. Um, and I'm sure I'll do that tonight. But stepping back, and obviously this being um, a re- repeat of the of the final in 1999, but just seeing how Bayern have been over the last few years mm. in the period where United have been on this downturn, and also just the, the symbolic nature of going to that... St- brilliant stadium Harry Kane who Manchester United spent a lot of time at the start of this um, summer transfer window courting and, yeah. and basically trying to push him into turning to Spurs and being like look I don't want to come here and then Kane actually speaking quite well on on Tuesday in his press conference and also saying look you know there were conversations to be had but there was only really one choice and I kind of like no I get that yeah and I think that's a, that's an understanding with a lot of Manchester United fans now and even the Manchester United fans who kind of rally against that can understand it. you know you got to back your team you got to love your team and whatever and having you know tasted those fruits you kind of wonder why you're chewing a mulch at this point <laughs> do, you, yeah. do you think that Manchester United performing in the Champions League though back in the Champions League do you not think that like teams coming to play them will be or, or you know playing them at home there is a bit of history there well, so it's in the a same reputa- way that Newcastle didn't have it exactly between, certainly between certainly between these two teams exactly mm-hmm. yeah I, I think it relies on that because if you look at you know you look at that group on paper you you're basically viewing it through um through that same lens, mm. yeah, where you think Galatasaray and uh, Copenhagen, United should, should finish a second in that group, even though Galatasaray had a few good results, like what they beat Marseille and Lazio mm. last year. Uh, FC Copenhagen didn't didn't lose a game at home, and they mm. were in a group with Man City, Sevilla, and yeah. whatever else. Yeah. And so, like United can't go into those games and think like, oh, we could rely on this. But it def- I think it definitely it will help. help. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it feels like a lot of the things that you clutch on as a Manchester United fan right now are quite symbolic. It's like. Mm. You know, it, it's the players that you might be able to sign. It, it's, for example, it's like having Casemiro in midfield, even though he's having a really bad start to this season. It's someone like Marcus Rashford. It's signing an exciting player in Rasmus Hoyland. And it's being back in the Champions League. And yeah. it doesn't take much for, you know, to lose the veneer of that, for it to be scratched away. Yeah, yeah you, and, you... and it could be scratched away with the biggest fucking knife of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gets really that down the training, uh, you, the training you can't, uh, I mean, ground. It gets to the point where you talk about all these things and you can't, you can't just throw you know, the official history of Manchester United book yeah. on the pitch and exactly, say, here yeah. we go. Yeah. You know, Bayern Munich are unrecognisable from 1999. Obviously, they've had mm. a great level of success yeah. themselves since then. United have had it as well, but not more recently. You know, the, the issue for tonight's game, and like I say, we'll cover it and we'll talk about it afterwards uh, and it will be out to listen to first thing tomorrow morning, is that the midfield area for United and, and Vicious alluded to it there with Casemiro is a problem and Bayern Munich are incredibly strong in that area. <laughs> yeah. And so that is that is a, an issue. That's Come on, you read FA Cup song? Yeah, because what? Just play, play that. Play that. Play that. Play yeah. that in the... Put like a 90 sound system in the centre circle. <laughs> yes. Play that before the game. Play that. Like yeah. the hacker. Be like a hacker. Yes. But it's like, come, come on, on you red. Come on, you red. Should we play Bears up top? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there, and there's also, it, it should be worth saying because it will be become evident later today, or you know, this evening. United's record in recent times against good teams is dreadful. Mm. Yeah. They yeah. got they're really, gonna have really end, yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's been reported that Man United staff are a, a little bit concerned by um, Eric Ten Hag's agent, uh, Keith Voss, over the, uh, uh, the the recent United transfers. He's been involved here and there. Um, uh, Luke, you were quite interested in Keith Voss's face. He looks amazing. Mm. He's a very, very um, eccentric, uh, charismatic character on Instagram. He's, sometimes he has beards, sometimes he doesn't have beards. Yeah, he does He does, um, mm. he, he does a thing where he, he, he does a before and after of his beard. Mm. And then he, he he puts in a little caption, Gillette, the best a man can get, with like a big smile. Yeah. Like it's not relevant he, to anything. He looked the way that he dresses, he dresses like a kind of home counties Tory. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not think? He's yeah, like yeah, wears yeah, a lot yeah. like wax jackets, yeah, it yeah, seems, yeah. And, and you don't expect that from uh, a, a, a man on European. He looks, he looks like a kind, he looks like a guy who would be featured in a Alan Partridge feature, yeah. um, my favourite farmer. He he looks like uh, a man going toe to toe with a big carving knife with James Madison at the Carvery. Yeah, big yeah. time. He looks right. like a guest 
um, who runs an artisan farm on Saturday Kitchen. Yeah, <laughs> um, nice. he's got real Top Gear on Dave energy. Isn't oh, it? big yeah. time! Yeah. He's the manager's all the work on the celebrity farm and yeah. winery episodes. Definitely yeah, good. Um, although, can, although on that, I would I would absolutely take wine recommendations from him. Yes, correct. Any, like anybody in the Manchester United set looks like he knows his clarity. How Ferguson I've ran seen, the club. I've seen your Instagram, <laughs> and you will take wine recommendations from pretty much yeah. anyone. So, uh, <laughs> that's not the compliment it sounds like. Um, Case Ross actually founded SCG, <laughs> which is like a big entertainment agency it's based in the Netherlands that obviously he's Dutch mm. but one of their leading agents is Pep Guardiola's brother so like it's right. not, it's not okay, like a, it's so it's not like a, a big right, yeah, and yeah. I learned that when I was researching ahead of the show the other thing I learned is that Eric Ten Hag has got a son called Nigel oh it's lovely and, stuff and, but and I Nigel mean... feels like it's a, a more popular name in Holland than it needs to be Nigel yes, yeah, 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 correct, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only one I can think of, but it's <laughs> well, making plans for Nigel. That's, well, yeah, there you go. Well, we always had like you had your Jason Ferguson's, your Mark Allardyce's, yeah. Mark Redknapp, Matthew Francis. That's literally all we can say about them. All we can say it's is to all... list their names. That's all we can say. Darren Dean. Uh, that's all we can say. That's <laughs> yeah. all we can say. Uh, but they all worked at agencies. But it's kind of like... like Ricky Lambert. If you want to learn more about that, you're going to need to do your own research. I've, I very <laughs> much enjoyed back in the day. Freddie Shepard's son worked at his agency role at either an office at St. James's Park or the training ground. That's too close. <laughs> That's too close. Get him a wee work in you're the not, town centre for crying out loud. Trying. You're not even trying. You're not even trying to pretend you're separate for yeah. crying out loud. But it's kind of like, it's the on-field stuff when it comes to, I mean, I'm going to say Nepo babies. Like, th- that, we well, can apply this. you're a Nepo baby yourself. I'm a course. Nepo baby I mean, yourself. You can't have the kind of career that Stewie does without the Navy. <laughs> I expect it to not benefit your broadcasting Petty career. Officer Donaldson, thank you very yeah, much. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right? Has that helped you, do you think, in your broadcasting career? I, I think his, his stay uh, career uh, that inv- involved him uh, at one point losing um, multi-billion uh, uh, dollar plans for a uh, submarine, a nuclear submarine uh, behind the back of a toilet. Um, I think it, it's those kind of like you know snapshots from his career yeah. uh, that, that really have, it, it's a big um, big shoes to fill. That's I would the story say. you took the most influence from in your career. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, we can find a lot of stuff behind toilets. You, you, lose, <laughs> you, you lose quite a lot of points behind a conversational toilet. Don't you? <laughs> Sorry, mate. How long yeah. are you going to be? I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> Check the system. Read the, read that definitely was paper. toilet paper, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um, obviously, uh, Nepo Babies is, is something that we talk about quite a lot in like films and media and stuff. But obviously, on field is is where it gets quite disappointing for the football fan, isn't it? Because yeah, but like, not... you've, you've got these fo- footballers who are sons, uh, 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 daughters of footballers, and then then they can never be as good as what their father was. <laughs> and here's here's the thing. Nepo baby situation in entertainment, as far as I know, mm. is a conversational point because they are successful. Right, right. So they, they yeah. are household yeah. names. Yeah. They, yeah. Some of the biggest stars in Hollywood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The, the 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 conversation across the football, mm. you know, is slightly different as far as that all of them seem to be essentially a massive disappointment. <laughs> and I can't find a single one in the list no. that's actually doing an awful lot. I mean, Well, Arthur Linger Harlan's got probably something to think about. Yeah. Erling Harlan's the only one. <laughs> Erling Harlan's the only one. The others are like Charlie Savage, who I understand is carving out a decent, you know, professional career. Daniel Maldini. Why is he playing attacking midfielder? For crying that's out loud. Not, that's unacceptable. Uh, unacceptable. Casper Schmeichel? Yeah. Fair, yeah, I suppose, fair. but that's well, a long time ago. But now. even Casper mm. Schmeichel, I remember uh, there was a... Where's the third a, one? He did a... Po- <laughs> where's, your, where's your baby, Casper? Where yeah. are the other ghosts? Um, <laughs> he he was talking on a podcast, I think, last season about how um, he really struggled to break in and, mm. and talking about his challenges to become a pro. And it's yeah. like, there's literally footage of you playing in <laughs> in the tunnel at Old Trafford with Tom Ince <laughs> while they're waiting, yeah. you know, while they're queuing up for, you know, yeah. about to go on the field um, for like a big premier, premiership game as it was at mm. the time. And it's, 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 it's a door down a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a door opener, isn't it? But you've still yeah. got to perform while you're Oh, there. yeah, yeah, of course. It, but, mm. It's one of the best things about football, really, mm. isn't it? That is a meritocratic game. Yeah. But like, it has to be. You can you, be. can you can get through the door, but there mm. is so much money at stake. They're like, no one's going to do you any favors. No, also it's, it's, it's entirely governed by results, which of course you can't say about the yeah. entertainment industry. Mm. But the um, the list of um, nepo babies and the couple that have been pulled out in the running order today are Romeo Beckham and Harvey Neville, both dreadful. Yeah. So it's not it's not like I mean it's not like they're really pulling up any trees, relatively speaking, are they? No, true. Well, there's one left chef, one less uh, chef's job out there for Romeo Beckham because uh, <laughs> uh, Rio Ferdinand's Italian Botulism special. Botul- <laughs> when he put that fucking isn't raw that, joint of beef. Isn't that, isn't that Brooklyn right. Beckham? Oh, is it Brooklyn Beckham? Yeah, it oh, Brooklyn, right. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Brooklyn's That's the, the Brooklyn's the photographer but and yeah, chef. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's, I, um, I will not comply with that. <laughs> he uh, he also got into mixology and he made um, <laughs> he he made his favorite drink, which was a gin and tonic. 
What are you doing this week, Brooklyn? Uh, yeah. Did you see the one who took a photo of an elephant and it was just in the dark? Yeah, yeah. It, oh, it was, it was, I mean, it was there were atrocious pictures. He took, he took a photo, he, so he has his book out and it was, there was one photo of a party which was blurry, but it wasn't even artistically blurry. No. And he's, atrocious. He's obviously written his own captions. So, yeah. so the caption for this was, uh, it's a party, it's a bit, a bit blurry, but you get the gist. <laughs> That's a photo book. That's a coffee table book. <laughs> yeah. like you yeah. get the, elephant, the gist. The elephant one was like the elephant was in the dark. And yeah, that was so blurry as well. Elephants, so beautiful to see, but so difficult to photograph. <laughs> Don't put it in the book then. Yeah. It's a photography book. What, you what are the ISOS settings on one of the slowest animals on the fucking earth? <laughs> also, also you, you can't take a photo of, of, uh, of an animal that we figuratively use to talk about something that's not in the room that you can actually see. <laughs> Idiot. Yeah, yeah. Any photograph when you blow it up and put it in a book looks impressive, apart from the ones he managed to <laughs> isolate. So in many ways, it's real. It's a real achievement, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's anyway, a kind of achievement, isn't it? Yeah. Well, uh, Rio Ferdinand's Italian restaurant in Manchester has permanently closed. Unfortunately, Rosso was the tipping point for Rio Ferdinand. Um, Harland, Erling Harland, uh, turning up with pajamas. He's been wearing pajamas out and about. He's a great eccentric. That's the thing about <laughs> Harland. You know what you what you got to love about him is that. Yeah, the, the the really world class, you know, you know genre defying footballers that we've seen like Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, like they're both quite boring, like replicants. Mm. Yeah, there's not really much yeah. going on. Erling Haaland's still quite an eccentric character. Like Brassel yeah. told us back in the day when he first scored, I think it was his first hat trick in the Champions League. Like some journalist pulled up next to him at a red light, and he had the Champions League ball in his arms, driving, and he was listening to the Champions League theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that kind of character, right? Love it. Um, yeah, yeah. But I was I, I was looking into um, footballers owning restaurants. Right. Vinny Company had two places um, called Good Company with a that's K. That's good, yeah. But they closed down. Oh, uh, that's cost a him, shame. Cost them two million pounds because they had a lack of customers. Just... And the best one is: Did you know that Clarence Seedorf owns? <laughs> I don't know why. Make your own conclusions from this. Clarence Seidorf owns a restaurant called Fingers. <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah. And it's got, it's you got, just don't want that. It's Footballers a, come with certain reputation. You don't want that. It's got a little side bit, um, which is genuinely called Fingers Garden. That's better. That that softens it somewhat. I would say that, like, I wouldn't... Tr All of these footballers are skinny. I want a Neville Southall eatery. Yes. Tr yeah. The man's eating. It's That's what I want. Stop. It's basically a truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, a greasy. Do you want an yeah. egg on that burger? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say Do you remember? He, he, he looked absolutely ripped at the age of about forty. He yeah. still looks good now. Does he? Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen him for He's a not eating at fingers. He's yeah. just not crying out loud. <laughs> well, just a reminder that uh, Luke and Vish will be um, coming at you uh, as soon as the final whistle goes uh, at uh, Bayern versus Manchester United and Arsenal versus PSV. Subscribe to uh, this, the Ramble um, feed that you're listening to this show on uh, and you'll be getting that. Uh, is it dropping tomorrow morning? Yeah, drop first thing. So when Lovely. you wake up tomorrow morning, it'll be there for you. Uh, but it's important that you subscribe because then you never miss an episode. So don't exactly. just press listen. Press Silly. subscribe or, or whatever it is on Spotify. I forget the name of it. Follow, I think yeah, it is. Exactly. Well, as I said, Arsenal uh, versus PSV uh, is happening tonight at 8 p.m. This is Arsenal's first Champions League game since they lost 10-2 uh, on aggregate to Bayern Munich in 2017. Uh, a scoreline, presumably, you might be enjoying tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you think we'll get two? Brilliant. Yeah, that was across two legs, crucially. Yeah. <laughs> the group stage is just a one-off at the moment. Yeah. It's, it's the Champions League. It's, it's great to see them back, but is this a bit of a distraction to what they could be achieving in the league fish no I, I think yeah. this is this is all part of it part like, parcel. yeah I, I think you know they, they've they've been a bit bitty this season mm. but they've actually ground out results and it feels like they're kind of building to that same fluency that they had last season mm. and I think this is part of it because it, yeah. it creates a sense of belonging doesn't it like first game at home quite sweet the deck uh, you know another sweet first play, um, players first time in the Champions League there was a clip of Arsenal training yesterday um ahead of this game and Declan Rice picked up the Champions League ball and was just looking at it. No, Because nice. I do that when I walk into like JD Sports and it has the Champions <laughs> League ball. Like, oh, look, this is pretty cool. And you're always in JD Sports. Yeah. Always, yeah, just for the trackies. Yeah. Do you, I miss JJB Sports. What happened to them? Don't know. Do they get to probably Sports Direct? I think they sponsored. They put all their lines sponsoring weekend, didn't they? <laughs> I used to work for an independent sports shop um, as a kid. It's a Saturday boy, mm. and it's a lot of fun. But that, Saturday boy, that got swallowed up. Bring me like, the Saturday boy. Yeah, that's what I was. I called you back then, back in the day. Two pound forty-seven an hour, mate. Jeez, oh. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh. um, and that got swallowed up by I think Har. I want to say Hargreaves into sport. Are they still going? Uh, oh, I don't know. No, used to be a lot of different sports shops around. Is what I'm saying. And it yes, always, it yeah, always yeah. did have like someone's name. Yeah. Involved yeah. as well. And, yeah. and the thing about the sports shop I worked at, which was I think is unbelievably quaint now, is JD Sports, as far as I know, they do do a little kind of 
dalliance in actual sporting equipment. But yeah. basically, it's like a it's essentially like a leisure wear shop, right? <laughs> the, st- the shop I worked in called Sports Kit, it used to sell like really good, like specialist stuff. Like you go in there and get like a cricket bat. Yeah, or an extension for your snooker cue. Right. Yeah, or, <laughs> or a cricket bat. That's, yeah. that's where the, um, um, the uh, famous story about um, the Predators, I told you that story. No. Where we, we had to sit down one night. As a as a as a, someone, a representative from Adidas came in mm. and told us about the new Predator boot because it was like 1996 when I started working there, and it was a really interesting thing. They were showing us all about it, mm. and at the end they said there are any questions. And the guy who I worked with, he wasn't very clever to be fair to him, said, um, I put his hand up and said, "Yeah, are there any uh, plans to roll out a Predator cricket bat?" <laughs> and everyone laughed at him, and he went, "No, no, because what you could do is you could bend the ball around the fielders and stuff." Jesus, yeah, that why, never, that why never not? Came out. Why not? And that man was Pete Donaldson. <laughs> I'm, I'm on board. Why has nobody thought about this? What's the biggest like in cricket? Has there ever been like a kind of thing that wasn't allowed? Aluminium bat was one, wasn't it? Yeah, Dennis Lilly had one, um, bat. but then he he was banned from using it straight away. Uh, there was. Did something... you get corked bats like in baseball? No, right. no, because it's not that effective, right? Um, <laughs> But you, so you used to get like cricket bats with the edges shaved off. They were like Woodworm or a brand that did those. Um, right. I'm not really sure why they stopped. And then there was one where they made the actual wood of the bat smaller. So the actual blade of the bat. So oh. it was a longer handle. So you could swing it like a golf club, basically. But right. Then, You've got to be quite be accurate. That's good for 2020 that. now, though, right? Yeah, that was, well, that was exactly what it was brought in for. Yeah, right, in okay. 2020. I can't remember what that was called. Um, but on the Predators, I, when I went football boot shopping with my mum when I was 12, we went in there and the guy... We worked at the shop was giving us the big sale on Predators for like 90 quid. And he was like, the thing is, yeah, gives you um, 30% extra curl and 17% extra power. And my mum went, he's 12. <laughs> <laughs> he's 12 and I've seen him play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, will they ever make Adidas Predator gloves is the question. They, they, they did. They, prob- they did, they? didn't they? Did they, they? They made Adidas, they had a, um, I think they were called Finger Save. Well, they had More like a, finger chart. Don't like it. But they had um, like a, a solid bit behind the finger. Oh, oh that, that's bending back. Yeah. That's yeah. modern. That's modern uh, goalkeeping gloves. I can't be handling them. It's like having a Why do you want predator themed things now? <laughs> yeah. What's, what's this about? Yeah, are you know. bringing them back? I think I am. Have well, you recently <laughs> invested in predator? <laughs> Would you like to describe yourself as the Rambles predator? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that. Uh, but who will be playing in goal? Predator gloves or, or no? Oh, uh, for yeah. Arsenal tonight. Mikel Arteta obviously <laughs> uh, upset half of Twitter by uh, dropping Aaron Ramsdale for David Rea at the weekend. Um, he just said, it's something that historically is done, but I cannot have two players in this position and not play them. We have to use them, and it is like this. And I, and I, th- I think... Confusing. I think, I think that um, Arteta's about to find out that life comes at you quick, because just this morning, <laughs> I saw Ramsdale being linked with a host of clubs. Good. Yeah. I think, I mean, this it's is a shame game. that this can't be done without there being a massive circus around it. Yeah, but it can be. You know why? You know who does hit Roberto De Zerbi, does it? Mm. Yeah. And no one says anything. I, I think it's, you know, I suppose other teams, other bigger teams haven't done it. Like, it feels like Brighton happened upon it to a point. But then I suppose, you know, Brentford have, have kind of done it in terms of like, had a bit more of a fluid mm. um, first choice. Some teams have done it unwittingly, like Chelsea with Kepper and Edward yeah. Mendy. This, I mean, this is a game, really. And then maybe going into the North London derby, where, where you'll actually find out if there is a hierarchy. Because mm. maybe this one is an easier game to give Rayo after he started on the weekend. And then if Ramsdale comes back for the North London derby, you're probably thinking, OK, you're the big keeper. Right, yeah. You know, it- you're certainly the one trusted to do the, the big games, the ones with the most... External pressure. Is it, but is it this just, is quite an informative week, I think. For but that. is it just? Is it just that? Um, you know, uh, I think I, I saw a couple of stats online about um, one goalkeeper. Obviously, uh, in Ramsdale's Dale's court, so to speak, um, is a little less good at coming to claim. And rare I, is, which is what and rare is. Edison, so yeah. then. You, you you should be able to sort of switch goalkeepers like that, and obviously Ray's not not quite as good as good as uh, but, Ramsdale but, with his but, feet. But but, but I th- I think maybe that what's at play here is some of the clubs that Vish mentioned there, um, Brighton and Brentford being two of them. I mean, Deserby does rotate his keepers. I mean, he does do that, mm. Uh, mm. and and I think perhaps it's to do with the size of the club. I don't mean this to be you know, ruse to anyone else, but Arsenal is a club with a massive amount of attention on it mm. because of its location because quite a lot of um, journalists are su- support Arsenal and, they, and they're covered they're just one of those clubs that are covered every minute of every day so it becomes a story because there's an appetite for st- endless stories about Arsenal mm. now rightly or wrongly there isn't about Brighton or Brentford and no one really talks about it even though Brighton are flying really high so I think it's to do with the fact that 
everything is a story when it comes to Arsenal. Yeah. And Arteta gives good quotes and all the rest of it. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out because ultimately, Ramsdale, again, rightly or wrongly, has been linked with a lot of clubs today. Like right. it may, There's going to be a reason for that. It might be a bit lazy. It might just be a bit like, oh, certain clubs have been asked questions and they say, oh, yeah, he's a great keeper. We want him and they've spun a story out of that. It may well be that Ramsdale's actually quite pissed off about it. And you could see why he is, would be pissed off about it. Because he's always saying, quite... Outsp- he's got that kind of mentality, I would but, say. But I'm not like saying he, he is, but it would be within his mm. rights to be so. But also, like, he... he should and he probably would like yeah. he'd want to start every I, game that's the whole I, point the especially because like a lot of the issue in how it's framed is basically it's quite new we don't really mm. know how to talk about it because it's not really happened before mm. this level I, I fundamentally I want it to work because big football teams they, they, they you know they have throwing coaches and, and they have these kind of like very small uh, 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 small um, improvements to the side why can't you swap out your goalkeeper I so, want this so, to work so I think it's I think Sometimes the comparisons are a little bit wider than Mark because I think it is slightly different with a goalkeeper for the fact that it's a completely different position. Um, Because when you're a goalkeeper, everyone, you can use your hands. And no other player can. Whoa. As a result, they train differently. They train Mm. like a little group. Like there's there's a kind of hierarchy that's present around goalkeepers, and of course the second choice goalkeeper wants to knock the first one off his perch or take an opportunity when the first one's injured. But it is a different new thing. I'm not saying it's wrong. It's a it's a it's an experimental way of doing things, but. If Aaron Ramsdale's cool with it, then great. But I doubt that um, Arteta and the team went up to Ramsdale before and said, we might sign David Ray. Are you happy mm. with that? Because he probably would have said, no, I'm fucking not. Mm. And so we'll have to see how it transpires. Yeah, and obviously we've seen it in the past with cup goalies and you know league goalies. You know, Last year with West Ham, where it was Ariola and Fabianski. And then it also plays out moving forward in that specific example where Ariola is now just the first choice. And it happened at Man City where he always uses a keeper for the League Cup or the FA Cup or whatever. It's a bit different but because it's more the, rotation, but yeah. But the understanding is that that's a less important yes, trophy. Exactly, and therefore yeah. there are less lower stakes on the game and therefore the guy can go and get an experience mm. or whatever. So it'll be interesting. Ultimately, you, you want Arsenal to get off to a winning start tonight. It's a winnable game for them. Yeah. Um, the, this, the, this, the stadium there will be absolutely pumping. They've been a lot happier since the recent um, improvement, which is understandable. Um, and um, yeah, we'll see what happens. But they they should be looking to get a nice home win to start with the championship Jim campaign. Will, Jim with. will be watching with a Cerveza down in. Is he in Portugal? Uh, yeah, is he, he in is, Portugal yeah. at the moment? Is he? Yeah. Is that Cerveza? I was forgetting. Oh, I think no. producer Rory and producer Finn are going to the Arsenal game tonight. Oh, lovely stuff. Yeah, so well, they'll, they'll enjoy that. that report back. Well, yeah. uh, let's get out of here. Uh, if you are a Patreon subscriber, don't go anywhere. By the way, keep listening for Ramble Uncut. We have got loads to talk about. Warnock's last game uh, in his role. We've got uh, Roy Hodgson. Uh, we've got uh, a Scottish amateur football club called Harrington Town who were furious with Elon Musk if you would like to gain access to that uh, audio that we haven't recorded yet <laughs> uh, head on over to uh, Patreon and subscribe thank you for listening to the Football Ramble part of the Acast Creator Network tomorrow Luke and Vish will be back with Ramble Reacts as we said following tonight's Champions League action you can follow us on Twitter TikTok YouTube and Instagram at Football Ramble and don't forget to subscribe on your podcast app so you don't miss now Luke Moore farewell cheers for a bit yeah see you later Vish I'm so sorry about what's going to happen tonight. Yeah, me too. Yeah. We'll be back tomorrow. Thank you for watching a clip from the Football Ramble podcast. Uh, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss an upload. A single upload. <laughs> don't miss out on the uploads. The uploads are important. I think the. I think it's just at that level of club as it was. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Sorry. Oh, keep that in. No, don't do that. No, editing that out. I put a predator uh, microphone there. <laughs> yeah, it came out seventy percent quicker. Yeah. It's a bit of Ricky Lambert bacteria <laughs> got into your nose. <laughs> Bill Gates knows where you are now. <laughs> and I've been. Yeah, and I've got the vaccine. <laughs>